Oh, look at that. I got so many people to talk to. All right, we'll stop with Jung Hee. I'm probably not even pronouncing it right. Hello, Kasuga san. <laughs> I must say, this place is quite comfortable. Yeah, ain't it? Also, seriously, man, how's a guy make drinking alone look so cool? Guess it's easy when you're as handsome as you. <laughs> That's kind of you to say. Why don't you let me buy you a drink? Yo, for real? <laughs> hey, now you're speaking my language, man! You certainly are a mysterious one, Kasuga-san. Songhui speaks highly of you as well. I dare say it makes me jealous. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, speaking of, have you been with her long? You've got this butler and lady of the house thing going on. It's only been three years since I was brought into the Komijul. I can't say it's been long. No shit. Up until then, I was with a group called the Jingon Mafia. I was their leader's body double. Body double? You mean like a decoy? Just like the real thing? Indeed. If my master was ever targeted by our enemies, I was to be killed in his place. That was my duty. I didn't figure people still did that kind of stuff. Uh, wait, does that mean your face is... An imitation, yes. What you see is a result of large-scale plastic surgery. But I'll have you know my previous face was rather handsome as well. A shame not a single picture of it exists anymore. Really? Out the window then, huh? In a manner of speaking, yes. So that means Junki Han isn't your real name either, right? What's your real name then? <laughs> Surely we're not that close yet, are we? Come on. First step in becoming friends is calling each other by name, right? Hmm. Well, isn't this awkward? I'm afraid I'm the type to want a bit more distance with people. That how it was with the Jingon Mafia? From the name, I'm guessing it was some sort of Korean Yakuza-like thing. Weren't you once a member of the Tojo clan, Kasuga-san? I'm surprised you've never heard of the Jingon Mafia. I was in the clink for a long time. The Jingon Mafia and the Tojo clan clashed in the 1980s, long before you were serving time. The 80s? Dude, that's 40 years ago! I was just a baby back then. Doubt I even had hair. Yes, I had yet to be born myself. Regardless, early in the decade, the Tojo clan attacked the Jingon Mafia and massacred a great number of them. Around 30 or so. 30? Back then, Kamurucho was the most sought-after territory in all of Asia. I've heard the conflicts for control were rather intense. The Tojo clan was incredibly strong, and they made sure it was a well-known fact. Still, to off 30 of them is... To get their revenge, the Jingon Mafia main arm in Korea sent even more members to Japan, some of them as undercover agents. But deception is a tricky business, and all who could not strike at the heart of the Tojo clan were considered failures and forbidden from returning. In the end, those that couldn't carry out the mission were abandoned and left without any place to go. One of them happened to be my father. Then... You were born here, in Japan. Yes, but be that as it may, I don't recall being welcomed here. I wasn't even accepted by any Korean communities either. My family was treated like slime and kicked out from wherever we went. We came to be called the Stray Jingon Mafia, running away whenever we were discovered. Slimes who run away, huh? You're worth too much experience slimes that run away should have gone with Maverick. You're worth too much experience. If you're slimes who run away, the reason they chase you is because you're worth tons of experience. <laughs> I get it. You're into video games, aren't you, Kazuga? Yeah, I played a lot as a kid. Well, you might be surprised to learn I am too. We should talk shop sometime. Hell yeah! So, what happened to the straight Jingon after that?
Hmm. Enter the 21st century, the winter of 2006. Around the time I turned 20, the Jingon Mafia from the mainland made an all-out assault against the Tojo clan. But even as that happened, the stray Jingon Mafia received not a word of warning. We were left completely in the dark. Our fathers were entirely forgotten by the countrymen that sent them here. You don't say. I might know a guy who could sympathize with that. Oh? Yeah. He's right in front of you. <laughs> I got tossed out by my family and locked up for 18 years. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That must be why I can't bring myself to hate you, Kasuga-san. So? What happened to the Jingon's big, all-out attack? Despite their careful planning, they were ultimately crushed by the Tojo clan. Ironically, those that survived came from all over to join those of us in the stray Jingon Mafia. <laughs> it was a miserable sight. Both sides cut off from home and left with no choice but to band together in the social sewer of a country that wasn't theirs. Sounds like you struggled. Wouldn't know it from looking at you, though. I could say the same to you. Yeah, finally starting to warm up to me? It would seem so. I haven't been acting much like myself today. I had a great time drinking with you, Kasuga-san. I truly mean that. So whatever happened to the real Junki Han? What's he up to now? He revived the Jingon Mafia roughly three years ago, and at that time had taken over a considerable portion of Kamurocho. But he was shot in the head and killed. I was absent at the time. And it all came crashing down, huh? Hmm? Wait, then that means... Can't you use your real name now? Why keep up the body double thing? Ah. <sighs> you're... uh... You're not trying to become the real Jungi Han, are you? Ah, who can say? But that's none of your concern, is it Kasuga-san? Or am I wrong? Nah, uh, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Farewell. Guess he's not the type to open up so easily. <laughs> I'll just have to keep drinking with him. <laughs> I love it. And our bond shall continue. Kasuga feels his bond with Chungi Han grows stronger. Chungi Han will not gain more experience when he's not active in the party. Yeah, we have to open up with everybody. So we got a lot more to go to. Oh my god, so much more. Zao, here you're marching in all by yourself. Pretty ballsy, but I like ballsy. All right, Nanba, let's do this. You drinking, Nanba? Oh, Ichiban. Glad you're here. We need to talk. We do? Is it something serious? Look, I need to tell you I'm sorry. For lying. You mean about chasing the counterfeit bill? Yeah. Think you can forgive me? Come on, you know we're past that. What's important is your brother got released. All's well that ends well, right? That said, maybe now's a good time to tell me if there's any other holes in your story. You really were a nurse at some point, right? Well, of course I was a nurse. How else could I have brought you back from the brink of death? Good point. Then, what about the part where you sold hospital meds? Didn't you say that's how you got your nursing license revoked? Well, that's the short version, but it's more complicated, actually. What do you mean? <sighs> You'll be the first person I've ever told this to, so... I hope you plan on sitting for a while. Ha, <laughs> man! I'm all ears! Back in elementary school, I read about Florence Nightingale. That's when I knew I was meant to be a nurse. Helping the sick, people being grateful for it, it's all I ever wanted in life. But when I finally put on my scrubs, it was different. Endless late shifts, difficult patients, never a word of thanks. Eventually, I just stopped caring. Little by little, I started cutting corners any way I could. I'd pretend not to hear the intercom, and instead, 
I'd go doze off somewhere. By the time I hit 40, I had no idea why I ever went into the field. But then one day, this new girl named Mizue showed up. And in her introduction, she brought up who else but Nightingale. Just like you, huh? <laughs> we had the same role model, but she still had her spirit. She would rush toward every patient in the ward. Never missed a beat. On top of that, she always had the sweetest smile. So, you had a thing for her. Are you kidding me? She was 23 and a looker. And I was just a middle-aged loser. You're younger than you look. Ever seen those old dudes walking around with hot young arm candy? You gotta be like those guys. Well, those guys also have cash to spare. Not always. If you could clean up a little and stay on top of the trends, I bet you'd be covered in ladies, instead of pigeon shit. Wow. Can't believe you'd say that to my face. <sighs> but you're probably right. Yeah, anyway, back to Mizue-chan. What happened? Oh, yeah, that's right. Whenever I saw her working, I could feel my old self coming back. That young version of me, who used to give it his all. Well, that's a good sign. If only I had half her stamina and wasn't twice her age. Anyway, one night I was a little sleepier than usual, so I went out to the back lawn, thinking maybe I could sneak in a nap, and suddenly I heard a noise from behind. I turned around to find the storeroom we keep the medicine in wide open, and Mizue-chan was walking out alone. Was she restocking? I mean, if you were slacking off, she was probably having to bust her ass. Well, that's the thing. In our hospital, only the pharmacists have access to the storeroom. Mizue-chan and I were just nurses. We didn't even need to go in there. Then what was she doing? Well, at the time, there was a rumor floating around the hospital. Uh-oh. Medicine would keep disappearing. The list never matched the inventory. According to the rumors, someone was swiping medicine and selling it. Illegally. No way. And that was Mizue-chan? It was. As my eyes adjusted, I could clearly see her arms were full of medicine boxes. But why would she need to sell medicine? From what I heard, her parents were under a mountain of debt. So, to lighten some of their load, Mizue-chan was paying everything she could. But a single nurse's salary wouldn't get them out of the hole. No way. So she was stealing the meds to do it? Yep. And I was the sole eyewitness. Thing is, Mizue-chan never noticed me there. Now, if it was you, Ichiban, what would you have done? Well, calling her out on it would seem to be the right thing to do. But I guess she wasn't stealing it just to be a criminal, huh? Not in the slightest. She was only doing it for her family. I mean, yeah, she was breaking the law. But she wasn't trying to hurt anyone. Plus, getting caught would cost her her job. Then the debt would only have gotten worse. With all that in mind, I'd say it's a pretty tough call to make. Huh. <laughs> now you're on the same page I was. Anyway, in the end, all I could do was watch her walk away without saying a word. If there ever was a criminal who deserved a free pass, it was Mizue-chan. That was what I thought at the time. So I turned a blind eye. And? What happened after that? It wasn't long before Mizue-chan's actions caught up with her. The hospital director decided to get the police involved, and started gathering evidence. He waited that long to take action? Well, he was trying to resolve it internally, being that the hospital's reputation was at stake. I guess he got sick of having a thief under his nose, so he escalated it to the next logical step. But if the cops caught Mizue-chan stealing, that'd be bad news. She'd have a police record, and her name in all the papers. To be honest, it was only a matter of time. She had her whole life ahead of her. Now, how could that happen to someone so young? And on the other hand, you've got me. A guy who totally burned out. A guy who couldn't be further from Florence Nightingale. Better a saint like Mizue-chan stay at the hospital than a sack of shit like me, wouldn't you say? Namba? Are you telling me you... Yeah. I went up and confessed to the whole thing. Stealing, selling and all. 
And that's how you lost your nursing license? Yep. Oh, and I got fired too. Naturally. Man, you went all out for that girl. Did she ever contact you after that? Even a call or a letter? Not that I'm aware. In a matter of hours, I was out of a job and out on the streets. You regret any of it? Well, my brother disappeared not long after. So even if I didn't get canned, I would have quit on my own anyway. So, no, to answer your question. Though I do have to admit, I would like to see Mizue-chan off when she goes overseas. She's going overseas? Yeah. She always dreamed of running off to some developing country where they really need medical professionals. She took that Nightingale shit seriously. Our hospital had an international dispatch program, available to staff nurses with at least three years tenure. This year would be Mizue-chan's third, and I know she would take advantage of it. Well, in that case, why not go say farewell? <sighs> if only I could. For starters, I don't even know when she leaves. Maybe if you ask one of your old nurse buddies, they'll tell you? Don't be ridiculous. I'm the little rat who stole the medicine if you forgot that detail. They want nothing to do with me. Well, hello, boys. Don't worry, the life of the party's here. Care to bring me up to speed? Oh, Sachan. Wait, are you drunk? <laughs> I think you're drunk. Uh, now, fill me in, if you please. Oh, Namba here was going off on one of his hobo horror stories again. Hobo? Horror stories? Well, no house means no toilet, right? Care to guess what he had to do when he had the shits? Yeah, I'd rather not. And here I was, thinking I'd get actual substance out of two grown men instead of literal crap. <sighs> Thanks for covering for me. I got you, man. I don't mind if we let Sayako know at some point, but preferably not when she's plastered. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, we finally unlocked our bond. Kasuga feels the bond with Nanba grows stronger. Nanba will not gain more experience when he's not in the active party. Nanba can now change to the fortune teller job. All right, folks, I think we are done for now because I see no hearts. That means, yep, that means... We're just going to head out at some point. I will see you folks next time. Until then, take care.